guys, Nick here from Just Few Studios, and welcome back to another movie review. Today we are doing Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. So, uh, yeah, I'm late. Again. I'm sorry. I suck at this. And also, uh, I'm sure you see the shirt. I'm not Team Superman. I just want to make that clear. I am very much so Team Batman. I mean, I do like Superman a lot, but come on. Batman. He's such a cool character, how dark he is, how gritty, his uh, psychology, you know, getting in his mind is so much more interesting than Superman. I mean, I love that Superman is that kind of Boy Scout doing good persona, but it's so cool seeing the kind of reverse, dark, beaten down, broken kind of superhero that Batman is. Anyway, I'm nerding on. Let's get to the movie review, shall we? So, story not great. I mean, it's not great. I was gonna compliment it and say, yeah, it's not total garbage, but I mean, kinda is. I mean, on one side, it's a decent, it's a movie that fans will really like, but on the other side, once you see Civil War, you realize all the things that they could have done and didn't. That's really the problem with waiting on some of these movie reviews, is you see other movies and start going, huh, you know, that could have happened. Or you start thinking about things more and they go, you know, that one part didn't make sense. He could have just done that. Or, you know, why didn't he do this other thing? I mean, a lot more things kind of come into your mind and you start going, man, that movie wasn't great actually. Because I, when I walked out, I went, okay, it was okay, it was actually decent. I mean wasn't the best movie ever, it wasn't the worst, but the beginning, that first half, I'm going to give you fair warning if you have not seen the movie yet, but granted, if you haven't seen it yet, part of me is thinking that you aren't going to see it, so, eh, but either way, just fair warning if you haven't seen it yet and you plan on it, the first half of the movie, pure exposition with like very little action to break it up, it's almost pure just story story. It's just building up the, here's Superman sauce, here's Batman sauce, here's Superman sauce, here's Batman sauce, Lex Luthor, Justice League, Superman sauce, Batman sauce. Yeah, that's a solid hour of the movie at least. Hour 15 minutes maybe? So I will say, you get one of the coolest Batmobile fights, I guess it's a fight, Batmobile driving scenes ever, or at least since the Batman Begins driving on the rooftop scene. It's the coolest thing since then, I have to say, that we've seen the Batmobile do. But on the flip side of all that exposition, you get about a 45 minute thing of pure action, which is cool, except all that exposition, it was really for nothing, I guess you could kind of say, because they get to and forget all that rushed little bit of story and fight because of that rushed little bit of story. And you're like, wait, wh what? You, you just want to see them fight now. Okay, that last hour, okay. Okay, sure. I do have to say though, that action scene may be a little rushed, pretty cool. If you just saw that 45 minutes or whatever of the action scene and that was a standalone I don't know if it would be a clip or something, and you didn't know that past whatever that led up to it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. The acting. The acting was fairly decent. It DC, they try and go dark, which, I mean, I love. The Dark Knight, amazing. Fantastic. I love that dark, gritty kind of feeling in it. It feels very real. Very, very just dark, and I love it. Man of Steel. It didn't need to be, it wasn't quite that it was dark, it was that it was very dull, I guess you could say. Very, yeah, life, right? Sucks. And you're like, I mean, that's not really a Superman thing. If anything, that's more Batman, but that's still not quite the Batman. The Batman is the, you try and have hope, find happiness, but then Joker shits on it, and you have to go at him with anger, but not cross that line and kill him. Superman shouldn't really be like, man, life sucks being a god. I like seeing him more as that Boy Scout, kind of the, not quite campy, but he shouldn't be super great and dark like this. And I mean, Batman v Superman, it very much so kept that kind of 
Man of Steel dullness, because it's not dark, it's just dull. But it, with the introduction to Batman, it did bring back some of that Christopher Nolan Dark Knight darkness into it, I feel, which was awesome to see again. Which, on the topic of Batman, Ben Affleck. Fuck yes. For all those people who are saying, Oh my gosh, Ben Affleck is never going to be a good Batman. Watch this. And fuck you. He showed how amazing of a Batman he could be. He's probably one of my favorite Batman. I mean, Christopher Nolan, or Christopher Nolan, he's probably one of my new favorite Batman actors, I have to say. I mean, Christopher Bale was amazing, but eventually the godly voice is a little irritating sometimes. And I like the more electronic arrow version voice modifier, the do you bleed? Chew. I like that so much better. And Ben Affleck, I think he does a very good job of capturing a lot of the Bruce Wayne facade to where he, when he's not wearing the costume, is really not being himself, and when he's Batman, that's him being himself. He did a very good job of showing that facade as Bruce Wayne, to where, yes, I'm a billionaire, and I am totally having fun at this party, even though I'm not, because I'm Batman. And then going to the flip side of, Batman, heck yeah! It was so awesome, and I think he nailed Batman. I want to see him do more Batman. But again, flip side, it feels like with this movie, they do something good, but then they do something equally bad, so it just kind of equals out that scale. But on that equal side of the casting, Jesse Eisenberg. Really? I mean, when I walked out of that theater, I went, man, I actually liked Jesse Eisenberg. He wasn't Lex Luthor, but whoever the hell he was playing, that was kind of cool. Because it wasn't Lex Luthor he was playing. It was named Lex Luthor. That was not Lex Luthor in the slightest. It was maybe an offspring of Joker, or Riddler, was not Lex Luthor. At all. In fact, I have a lot more to say about that, but I'm saving it for the spoiler talk, so make sure you stick around for that if you haven't, if you have seen the movie. And if you haven't, go watch the movie, or don't give a shit and watch the spoilers anyway. But yeah, I mean, pretty much the movie in a nutshell is all that right there. I don't have a whole lot more to say in the non-spoiler territory-wise, but it was about the best way I could describe it. They do something kind of cool. They do something kind of bad. They do something kind of cool. They do something kind of bad. And personally, overall, I think that's really hurting DC overall because Marvel, they're just skyrocketing forward while DC is barely able to kind of stay afloat going one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back. That's not helping them. And personally, the biggest thing that I can think of that they need to do to catch up to Marvel is get Zack Snyder out of there. I'll talk about it again more in the spoilers, but I mean, I loved him in Watchmen, Man of Steel was okay, but Batman v Superman, it's like he's doing the opposite and he's starting to go downhill, and that's not what DC needs to play catch up with Marvel. So, what do I give this movie on my out of 10 scale? It's kind of between a 6.5 stars and a 7 out of 10 stars, so here's how I'm going to leave it. From a kind of movie standpoint, I'd say a 6.5 stars is more accurate, but as a fan, she's seeing all these big kind of comic story arcs and the Trinity on screen together, it was really cool to see. So on that side, as a fan, I give it 7 out of 10 stars, but as a movie overall, I think it deserves more of that 6.5. So, I mean, that solves one part of the equation. How about a date, though? Not really any better. I mean, an hour and 15 minutes of, hey, Superman thinks this, Batman thinks this, Superman thinks this, Batman thinks this, Lex Luthor. It's not very romantic, I have to say. And I mean, you do get uh, Lois Lane again. And I mean, there's kind of a thing between her and Superman again. Feels a little rushed, though. It kind of is just meant to say, Hey, Superman, super there. Superman, he has a human side because of Lois Lane. And I mean, the Batman equivalent, I guess there's kind of Wonder Woman, but there's not really a thing going on between Wonder Woman and any of the other characters. She's just there in, with her accent. I mean, not the best romance movie. So, what do I give Batman v Superman as a date night rate? Mmm, I'd have to give it a 4 out of 10 stars. It's not great. It's not going to score you many points on a date. 
if you get a chance, go see a romance comedy, a rom-com, or even just a comedy in general would probably be better than this. You'll laugh a hell of a lot more, I'll guarantee you that. Let's get into the spoiler territory. So if you have not seen the movie and you do not want to be spoiled, leave now, go see it, and come back. Or if you have seen the movie, slash haven't, but don't give a fuck, that's cool too. Let's talk about spoilers, so. So the first thing to address, the most obvious one, so Batman kills now. Yep, yep. The first time it happened was in that Batmobile chase I was praising earlier. I was like, oh, this is so cool. Then you saw Batman just crush a car, and I was like, there were, there were people who said, they're, they're fine. Maybe some smashed bones or something, but they're fine. They're, they're alive. And then he crushed the side of that trailer, and I was like, so that guy's pretty dead. But, I mean, on the flip side, Batman killed a little bit in the uh, original trilogy that uh, Tim Burton did. Well, I guess he didn't do the whole trilogy, but in the old Burton movies, I mean, he technically killed... I mean, they never explained it. It was like pushing a guy, or pushing dynamite into a sewer drain and then pushing the guy into it. I mean, or knocking something over so the guy falls into it. Or a guy standing behind the Batmobile when the exhaust goes. I mean, they're kind of accidents. Then you get to the dream sequence where he's actually shooting people with real guns. And you're going... Yeah, I don't have an excuse for that. He is straight up murdering fools right now. Like... Yeah, they're dead. They are D-E-A-D dead. Or D-E-D dead. Deed. Even in that awesome fight we saw in the trailers, they cut out shots where he grabbed the gun out of the guy's hands, pulled down the trigger, and sprayed into a crowd of bad guys. I mean, seriously, he is killing people. That's not, that's like Batman's one code is don't kill people. And he is murdering everyone in sight. I mean... The thing is, though, DC, I feel, is put up on a little bit of a higher platform than Marvel is. Marvel characters, yeah, Iron Man kills people. I mean, that's the thing they talk about in Civil War. They kill people. Even uh, Captain America, he used a gun. He kills people. He's a soldier. They kill people in Marvel, and no one sweats at all about it. But Batman kills, and everyone goes crazy. I feel like DC is put up on a pedestal for their no-killing rule, and they're trying to go, hey, Marvel can kill, so can we, right? Fans are losing it because of it. And while it's not quite fair, it's DC's own fault. So Warner Brothers should kind of play by DC's rules, I feel. Superman, he shouldn't kill. Batman, he shouldn't kill. These are characters who in the comics have been known not to kill. And DC's kind of throwing that out. And I personally am not quite thrilled with it. I mean, Ben Affleck, I don't want them to reboot it because I like him as Batman. So if the consistency is you get Ben Affleck, but his Batman kills... I guess I'd be okay with it, maybe. I'm hoping that in a Batman solo film they'll explain it saying he didn't kill until his Robin died and that kind of pushed him over the edge. So that trilogy is him trying to go back to not killing? That's my only theory. But I don't know. And also, yeah, another thing. This movie wasn't really Batman v Superman Donna Justice. It was Batman v Superman and Donna Justice combined into one three hour movie basically. Two things that could have been their own movies combined. Uh, I don't... The Justice League stuff was cool, but I feel like it would have been cooler to see it just be Batman v Superman in this movie and set up, and then we just get at the very end, them talking about there are other metahumans out there. We must find them. And the fans are going, ooh, we know who the other metas are, and the other people are like, metas. Is that like... Is that like The Flash? And the fans are going, hey! I mean, it was cool and all, but still. Ugh. I mean, it felt a little out of place at times. Okay, now we're getting on to the Lex Luthor territory. I'm going to pace a little bit in the frame, just because I am so passionate about this, because I am a little bit angry about what I have to say right now. Lex Luthor, like I was saying, my non-spoiler, he wasn't Lex. In fact, they even said that in the movie. He was the son of Lex Luthor. He was like Lex Luthor Jr. or something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. Whatever. And he was just a bratty kid with daddy issues and money who just tried playing puppets with gods. <laughs> and I was like, not quite Lex. It's not quite Lex at all. And then, 
walking on Cedar again, like I said, I was like, eh, his character was cool, but it wasn't Lex. Went home, I did some research, I found out something that made me so pissed off about the whole thing. When they initially started, Jesse Eisenberg was not cast to do Lex Luthor. He was cast to do Jimmy Olsen and have Jimmy Olsen die in that first scene, like in that opening scene with Lois Lane and that photographer guy. The photographer was Jimmy Olsen, they just didn't say his name. So what it was going to be is they would say his name, have Jesse Eisenberg be that character, and have him be killed off in that first scene. So in all their pre-production stuff, it would be a giant WTF, because fans would be looking at the trailers and stuff going, hey, Jimmy Olsen's supposed to be in this movie. And Comic-Con, Jesse Eisenberg would go saying, hey, I'm playing Jimmy Olsen. And he dies in the first five minutes, and fans are going, whoa, they just killed off a huge comic book character, what? And then they'd have Brian Cranston to play Lex Luthor. That would have been amazing. I think Brian Cranston was, would be the perfect person to play Lex Luthor. He would be the intelligent mastermind who knocks. It would have been amazing. I cannot believe they missed that opportunity. And what happened was they were going to have Brian Cranston play him, but then Zack Snyder went, No, you know, I kind of think we should go with a younger Lex Luthor. Hey, this is a Jesse Eisenberg fellow. He already auditioned. He did all right. Instead of having him play Jimmy Olsen, let's just make him Lex Luthor. And of course, because he's Zack Snyder, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's go with that. It's the George Lucas phenomenon all over again. I mean, you just say yes to what the director says, and you get stuff like this. And it's not great when the alternative was Brian Cranston as freaking Lex Luthor. How do you not do that? And also, they did not learn from Man of Steel. They just had a whole bunch of exposition without any action to break it up and then a big fight at the end. They could have cut out at least half an hour of the movie. I mean, it didn't need to be that long. I was watching the movie going, huh, that scene I don't think really needs to be there. And then when I walked out, I was like, no, that scene really did not need to be in there at all. I would have gone the same experience, if not better, because I would have had an extra half hour. And I bet everyone's wanting me to talk about Doomsday. I was right. Ivan, we went to the same showing together. It wasn't planned. We just walked out of the theater and went, Hey, you're from Just Few Studios. Hey, you're from Just Few Studios. Cool. And uh, he said, yeah, your theory about Doomsday was right. Because in that trailer, I had theorized that Zod's body would be Doomsday. And that the reason why in that scene where he just kind of lands, he didn't look like Doomsday is because he would evolve. Superman would like punch him in a part that would break his bone and then it would regenerate spiked or something. And then like say someone beats off a hand and it would come back as a doomsday hand or something. And, I'll, and he was like, uh, maybe, I could kind of see that. And then we walked out and he was like, yeah, you were totally right. Which I mean, it was cool they did that, but doomsday felt a little too rushed. And again, I see they were trying to go with Death of, the, uh, Death of Superman, which is a cool comic book arc. But we've only seen one other Superman movie. I feel like they did this a little too early. And I mean, Doomsday, he's not a big enough character, I, I feel at least, to get his own movie, which is why they wanted to slap him onto this one. But I still feel like it was a little too rushed. Cool, but it just didn't fit in right. So again, moral of this story, I think uh, that Warner Brothers needs to get Zack Snyder out of there because he's on this decreasing arc. Watchmen. Freaking amazing. That's one of my favorite superhero movies of all time, in fact. Then you got Man of Steel. It had a lot of problems. It was overall a decent Superman film, but it had a lot of problems. And then you got Batman v Superman, the low point. And I really think they need to get him out, but the problem is, I think it's his wife. Someone who he knows and is in good contact is one of the heads up at Warner Brothers who's kind of helped give him this job. So. It's a little unlikely that they'll get him out before Justice League because he signed on to direct Justice League Part 1 and 2, which I feel is the biggest mistake DC can make right now. And I feel like they need a new director to come in, kind of clean slate some stuff, and do Justice League right so it can compete with Marvel. Because right now, everything's too gray and dull. Uh, Suicide Squad, it has the potential to be great. Looking at it, it looks like a fun movie, which is what DC needs. If you get Justice League, I mean, think about it. Justice League, of all superhero movies, should be a lot of fun. You get characters like The Flash, really wisecracking, quippy. 
Then you get Green Lantern, another, well, at least Hal Jordan's pretty wise, cracky, and quippy. If you want to go with Jon Stewart, that could be an interesting dynamic between Flash and Green Lantern, the hard-ass Green Lantern, and then the, haha, I can run from here to here in like a second. Want to see me do it again? Like, it could be a cool dynamic there, and then you got Aquaman, the person who everyone makes fun of even though he's a total badass. I mean, it should be a really fun movie, not super dark, which is why I love DC, how they're trying to go dark, but I feel like they're going a little too overboard with it, and they need to take a step back, have a little bit more fun in there, and then have some dark elements, but overall it should be a fun time, because Justice League has a lot of fun characters. It shouldn't be all gray and dull, so... I personally think they need to get uh, Zack Snyder out of there and someone new, very creative, enthusiastic in to do Justice League. But hey, that's just my thoughts. Again, this is about the end of the movie review, so leave in the comments. Team Batman or Team Superman? It looks like I'm Team Superman, but I'm Team Batman. I just couldn't find my Batman shirt. So like, favorite, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next movie review. Later! Woo!